proper lubrication, reducing friction and wear, and acting as a coolant is vital to the operation of the diesel engine. Without a protective film of oil between the metal surfaces, friction would result in excessive temperatures and the seizure of moving parts. In the Series 71 diesel engines, a pressure lubrication system supplies oil at all times to all engine parts requiring lubrication. An oil pump, driven by the crankshaft, continuously forces oil through passages leading to the various engine bearings. The oil from these bearings drains back to the crankcase oil pan to be recirculated by the oil pump. Lubricating oil enters the oil header or gallery in the cylinder block. Individual passages cast into the cylinder block then lead the oil to each of the main bearings of the crankshaft. From these main bearings, Oil holes drilled in the crankshaft lead the oil to the connecting rod bearings. Here we see one of the main bearings and its adjacent connecting rod bearing. Imagine them to be transparent so that the oil holes may be seen. Oil from the main gallery flows into a circular groove in the upper half of the main bearing shell. An oil hole drilled straight through the main journal and a passage drilled through the crank web conduct the oil to an oil hole in the crank journal from where it flows into a groove in the connecting rod bearing shell. Two holes in the upper half of this shell allow the lube oil to pass up through the connecting rod. Let us note here that only the upper shells of both the main and connecting rod bearings have oil holes for the passage of lube oil. The upper and lower shells of these two bearings are not alike and therefore cannot be interchanged. Incorrect placement of these shells will stop the flow of lube oil. The passage in the connecting rod supplies oil for the lubrication of the piston pin bearing. An oil duct around the piston pin also leads the oil to a spray jet at the upper end of the connecting rod. Here the oil is forced through four small holes in a spray nozzle onto the underside of the piston for piston cooling. The oil carries heat away from the piston crown as it drips back to the crankcase pan. Some of the oil is splashed against the cylinder walls by the moving connecting rod and crankshaft. The oil control rings on the piston skirt distribute the oil evenly over the cylinder walls and wipe off excess oil which drips back into the crankcase pan. Thus we have seen how the oil pump forces the lubricating oil through the main gallery to the main bearings the connecting rod bearings, the piston pin bearings, the underside of the piston, and the cylinder walls. The other moving parts of the engine receive lubricating oil from the main gallery also. From the main gallery, seen here in end view, a horizontal passage and two vertical passages at each end of the cylinder block supply oil for the lubrication of the end bearings of the balance shaft and of the camshaft. Overflow oil from these bearings collects in the balance shaft and camshaft pockets. The camshaft intermediate bearings are supplied with oil which enters the hollow camshaft from the two end bearings. One of the vertical passages also supplies pressure oil to the idler gear bushing. Oil spray and splash from this bushing, as well as overflow of oil from the camshaft pocket, lubricates the gear train. A second gallery is arranged on the camshaft side of the cylinder head 
and is supplied with oil through passages from the end bearings. From this gallery, individual passages lead the oil to the push rods and the rocker arms. The excess oil lubricates the other parts of the valve mechanism and drains into the cam pockets in the cylinder head to provide lubrication for the cans. After reaching a certain level, the oil in these pockets overflows through openings into lower pockets, one at each end of the blower housing. Overflow from these pockets provides lubrication for the blower drive gears and the governor mechanism. A dam in the blower housing cover maintains an oil level which causes the teeth of the lower timing gear to be submerged. Another dam on the opposite end of the lower rotor provides a reservoir from which a slinger throws oil into the governor weight assembly. Excess oil overflowing from these reservoirs passes from the blower through drilled holes in the cylinder block back to the oil pan. Thus we have seen how all the moving parts of the engine are supplied with a constant flow of lubricating oil. A continuous automatic ventilating system removes harmful vapors from the crankcase, the gear train, and the valve compartment. A small amount of air from the air box seeps between cylinder wall and piston skirt and through the vent holes at the lower oil control rings into the engine crankcase. From the crankcase, the air sweeps up through the flywheel housing and passes through a cavity in the lifter bracket into the valve compartment. At the other end of the valve compartment, the ventilating air enters the governor control housing from where a breather pipe leads to the atmosphere. As the lube oil circulates through the engine, it becomes hot and picks up impurities. To control the temperature of the oil and to filter out the impurities, an oil cooler and an oil filter are provided. In this schematic diagram of the circulating system, we see the arrangement of the oil pump, the oil cooler, the main gallery, and the oil filter. The positive displacement gear pump draws up oil from the oil pan through a straining screen. Looking inside this pump, we see how the open spaces between the teeth of the revolving gears carry the oil around from the intake to the discharge side of the pump. The close meshing of the gear teeth and their small clearance with the housing prevent the oil from leaking back. The pressure at the discharge side is sufficiently high to force the oil through the circulating system. A spring-loaded plunger-type relief valve bypasses excess oil from the discharge to the intake side of the pump when the pressure in the engine oil gallery exceeds 110 pounds per square inch. The gear pump delivers the oil to an oil cooler. Here it passes through a set of tubes around which water from the engine's cooling system circulates. A spring relief valve permits the oil to bypass the cooler when the oil is cold and too thick to flow readily through the small passages in the cooler. It also acts as a safety valve should the cooler become clogged. From the cooler, the oil enters the main gallery in the cylinder block from which it is distributed to the various engine parts. A portion of the lubricating oil entering the main gallery is bypassed through the oil filter and returns directly to the crankcase. This provides a continuous filtering to remove impurities from the oil. The oil filter is of the replaceable cartridge type. 
Dirty oil enters the filter under pressure through a restricted inlet passage. The oil passes continuously through the filtering element into a center collector tube and back to the engine through the filter outlet. Proper oil pressure is maintained within the system at all speeds by means of a regulator valve connected to the main gallery. When the oil pressure at the regulator valve reaches more than 45 pounds per square inch, it opens to relieve the excess pressure. The pressure lubrication system not only provides positive lubrication to all moving parts of the engine at all times, but filters the oil and controls its temperature as well. Proper care of the lubrication system is most important to ensure dependable performance and efficient operation of the diesel engine.